Sunday morning and Sam Swan, an emergency duty social worker, is starting a long shift. Sam, like all EDT colleagues, works when others don't. Weekends, nights and bank holidays. The work is diverse and the caseload usually heavy. We cover the whole spectrum of social work, really, in terms of working with children and families, mental health services, people with learning disabilities and people with physical disabilities and also old people. So really we cover a wide spectrum. Predominantly, nine times out of ten, we work on our own. We work through the night, which means that we have to prioritise work. We have to do assessments and investigations. And so there's a lot of um, responsibility and accountability, really, because obviously we have to stand by those decisions that we make at that time. After a handover from the colleague she's relieving, Sam's work starts. Almost immediately, the phone calls begin. That's custody. OK. Appropriate adult. OK. A 16-year-old is being held at Telford's main police station, suspected of carrying an offensive weapon. By law, an appropriate adult must be with him to safeguard his welfare and ensure that he understands all procedures and any charges being brought against him. As his parents are refusing to attend, that role will fall to Sam. So the officers are ready to go, but the solicitor's not there yet. OK, well, if you can give me a call when the solicitor's gone into consultation, I'll, I'll come along then. All right then, so we'll give you a ring just before we arrive, OK? Sam's next case is a woman at a local hospital who's causing staff concern. Sam may need to undertake a mental health assessment. She discusses the case with the co-sighted community nurse crisis team. She's been placed on a ward where she's continued um, to complain of physical complaints. Um, but they have, but their medical sort of investigations don't identify that there's any any medical problem. Okay, so she's known to us. She's yes, care she coordinated, is. is she? She is, yeah. Presumably, they'll let us know if if they become concerned about her behaviour and. Yeah. Right, Jointly, they decide that no immediate action is needed, as the hospital will hold the patient until Monday. And Sam's phone is ringing again. It's the call she's been expecting from the custody suite. It is. She's in consultation. OK, so we'll come over. See you shortly. Bye-bye. That was the sergeant from custody there. The solicitor's arrived, so we need to make our way over to, to custody. The EDT role demands experience, and Sam has plenty. She left school at 16 and came into social work through an admin job. I was appointed a social work assistant and I also had a varied caseload at the time. I worked at the local psychiatric hospital. I also had a few cases where children were on child, the child protection register as it was known at that time. I qualified in 1995 and um, chose to come back into predominantly child protection. I became team manager covering the, the north side of Telford. I stayed in team management for about, probably about four years, until a job came up in EDT. Morning. How are you? Very well, thank you. Good, good. Very rare opportunity for a job to come up in the emergency duty team, where I am now. So uh, it was an ideal opportunity, really, to go, to go back in as a, as a practitioner. Because you have those, that experience and knowledge base. I think it's fair to say that we all feel fairly confident in doing the job, but that's not to say that it's not tough at times. And sometimes you do question, is this the right thing to do? OK, then. Cheers. Well, this one actually was um, record time, I would say. We were in and out, really, within probably, what, an, an hour, which is pretty amazing. That's pretty good. He admitted it, he was charged, and he's been bailed to go to court um, a week on Wednesday. Back at the office, there are concerns that an elderly woman is not coping alone at home. Because she's having four calls a day, isn't she? So she'll have had a morning one. Sam checks in with the woman's home care service. So it's the same carer going in, so that's good. So she'll, rec she'll notice if there's any um, change, won't she, if there's anything she's worried about. OK. All right, then. Thanks, Linda. Bye. It seems to be good news, and Sam will continue to monitor the situation.
In the meantime, there's a new message waiting. That is our shop doc, our out of hours GP service, who want help with a lady who's suffering with severe anxiety and um, some symptoms of depression. A phone call to the doctor who's visited the patient reveals the woman's condition could be serious. The fact that she's not eating and drinking from a medical point of view, what, how will that impact? She sounds very unwell. All right then, bye-bye. Right, so I've got to coordinate a full mental health act assessment on this lady. Um, she's a 64-year-old lady who he says is not actually previously known to, to mental health services and has had problems with anxiety now for uh, the past month or so. Things have escalated in the last 10 days. This assessment now takes priority over Sam's other referrals and she swings into action. Several phone calls later, she's on the road. As an approved mental health practitioner, Sam's job is to coordinate and take an active role in the assessment. I've arranged to meet the psychiatrist and another GP at the address. The three of us have to assess and agree a plan, really. It's up to Sam to look at alternatives to hospital and ensure the woman's rights are protected. We need to talk to the husband and get his views about the situation and then um, make a decision then about the best way forward. Over the course of two hours, Sam and the doctors decide the woman does need to be admitted to psychiatric hospital. The woman's husband agreed to support the decision of the team. Oh dear, OK. It was... Oh, mental health fact assessments are always... Well, they're, they're just difficult, really. It, it, it's uh, quite stressful. She was really very sad. But, and I think the way we wrestle with that is you have to decide what's in the best interests of the, of the service user, really. As evening falls, EDT manager Helen Jones arrives to discuss the day's caseload with Sam. What sort of a day have you had today, then? Oh, it's been... Uh... It's been pretty busy, actually. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I'm glad you've come in because there's one or two things we can probably pass over for tomorrow, but I need to, just to run and past you then, okay. if that's all right. Sam agrees with Helen that it would be best if they attend the next case together. It's a child protection matter yeah. and requires a home visit. They are families where daytime services have got concerns about neglect, and issues around a lack of supervision and the parents' lifestyle. So in the daytime, it's difficult to obtain evidence, if that's what's needed, of what's actually going on in the families in the evening. So that's what we're going to do. We'll need to, you know, check the family home, make sure, uh, see if the children are in bed, make sure that there's enough provisions, that generally that things are OK and mum's coping well. All right, I'll just get my bag out of the car. OK. I've got my ID. Yeah. There are nearly 200 children in Telford under social services protection. Sam and the emergency duty team regularly undertake these checks for their daytime colleagues. She was in bed when we got there, so she was quite defensive, I suppose understandably, if we'd woken her up. But the children were asleep in bed. There was no suggestion that she'd been drinking, which is the major concern, really, is about her drinking and her lifestyle. You expect to have some <laughs> defensiveness when you, somebody's calling at your house at that time, really. Yeah, it is quite late, really. In fact, it's now after 11pm. Helen goes home to sleep before her Monday starts, yeah. but Sam's shift continues. There's still work to be done on several referrals from the morning. A mother of three is claiming her jealous partner has threatened her. It's in relation to a child protection matter, a domestic violence incident. The man's already wanted by officers. If he's in custody, Sam can take the opportunity to speak to the woman. She's now checking that with the police. He's made threats to burn down the house with the children in it, but um, so he's not been arrested, he's not in custody at the moment. OK, great, thanks for your help. Cheers, bye. OK, the, the situation remains the same, so I'll just hand that out back to safeguarding in the morning, um, let them know that he's still not been arrested, 
um, and they'll just liaise with the police again and trying to coordinate something. Fifteen hours after the start of her shift, the calls keep on coming. Many are from carers reporting looked after children who've outstayed their curfews. Sam risk assesses each case. The outstanding thing now for me is to write all the work up that I've done today, so that's really going to take up my time over the next uh, few hours and hopefully try and get a bit of rest period as well. I guess really the rewards of the job are, are the outcomes, whether it's the outcomes for children, for any client group really. It's the diversity of the work really, you come on duty, you really don't know what, what you're going to be faced with that day. Um, and, I, and I enjoy that and it's challenging. There's a lot of on the job decision making, quick thinking, that's what I enjoy. As an emergency duty worker, I guess one of the rewards is, um, for instance, for an older person, you know, there are a lot of old people who, who want to be at home and they don't, you know, they feel safe at home, that's where they want to be. And quite often we just get referrals saying this person can't be at home, they've got to go into, into residential care. And, and, you know, there are ways of avoiding that sometimes and it's good if the outcome means that we can provide support for, to enable that person to, to maintain their independence. The same can be said, I think, of people with learning disabilities. It's good to, to feel that you're helping people with learning disabilities to maintain their independence and to become a part of the community, really. It's Monday morning and Sam's shift is completed. Her colleagues now take over and they're another part of what she finds rewarding about the job. There is some good work that, that takes place and there's a, a lot of people work really hard and there's a lot of humour, there's a lot of, um, in, in the daytime service there's certainly a lot of um, team and support for each other um, and whilst we might not get the recognition for it, um, for the reasons of confidentiality or, or you know, there are people have human, the human rights legislation, all kinds of reasons for that. But what's good about daytime services certainly is that you can actually recognise it with each other and you can say to each other, you did a really good job there and that was a tough decision but it was the right decision and you did well. And, and I think the thing about social work is that we learn, we learn a lot from each other, really. You know, that, that's a good thing. And there is a lot of camaraderie, really, between individuals. And, yeah, we, we do have a laugh sometimes, you know, um, because that's the sort of thing that keeps you going.